someone's going away on a trip. The traveler is Bobby Watson. He's going out west all by himself to spend his vacation on Uncle Ray's ranch. And while Bobby gets all scrubbed and polished, cleaned and combed, down in the railroad yards, his train is being showered, soaked and steamed all at the same time. Before every trip, passenger cars are pulled through an automatic washing machine where they're scrubbed and polished until they shine. The big diesel electric locomotives, already cleaned and oiled, wait to be called for work. In another part of the railroad yard, fresh linen and towels are put on the train. And food for the dining cars where the passengers will eat while they ride. The Watsons live in a big city. Just now, Bobby and his father are coming to the station in a taxi. Some passengers arrive on foot, some in cars, and some by bus. The station is a busy place. Many trains come and go in this station. The bulletin board shows what time each train should arrive and leave, and whether it's on time or late. At the baggage counter, people may check their bags and suitcases to be carried in a special baggage car. Mr. Watson prefers to carry Bob's suitcase right onto the train. There are stores and newsstands in the station, too. Bob thinks a magazine may help to pass the many hours on the trip. Let's go, says Mr. Watson. The sign tells him where to go. Passengers pass through this gate to get to their train. Each passenger shows his ticket to the gateman so that the gateman can be sure that each passenger gets on the right train. Track number one, says the gateman to Bobby. Here's Bob's train all put together, ready for the passengers. In the rear is the observation car. As he walks by, Bob wonders if he can ride in it. Yes, says his father, but first we must find your seat on the train. The engineer and his helper are climbing aboard the big engine. They're all set for the trip. Here's Bob's car. The porter takes his baggage. Mr. Watson asks the conductor to keep an eye on Bob because this is his first train trip alone. Then he gives Bobby his ticket. All aboard. You're on your own now, he says. The engineer gets the go-ahead signal. He opens the throttle. The huge locomotive sets the train in motion, slowly at first. The signal light is green. The road is clear. Through the railroad yards, the train travels slowly. Bob's riding in a small room of his own called a roomette. A wardrobe is built into the wall of the roomette and a wash basin. Bob sees a neighbor open the wash basin. The tracks gradually lead out of town and join the main line. The engineer watches every road sign carefully. The safety of the passengers is in his hands. Traveling in a roomette is comfortable. Next, please. Bob has two tickets, one for the train trip and another one for his place in the roomette. The Pullman conductor gets the roomette ticket. The train conductor returns half of the round trip ticket to Bob to use when he travels back home again. Now Bob can go and explore the train. On his way, Bob first passes through a chair car. Many people like to ride in chair cars like this one, especially for short trips. It costs less and is quite comfortable. The attendant tells Bob that the observation car is three cars farther back. On his way, Bob sees the dome car, a car with a roof of glass. Through the glass dome, the passengers can watch the landscape all around them. Here is the observation car. Now Bob understands why it's at the rear end of the train. While the passengers relax and enjoy their trip, many people work to keep them safe and comfortable. Let's prepare meals for the 200 passengers. 
Now the train's hurrying through farm country. Each time, the waiter rings chimes to tell the passengers to come to the dining car. In a moving train, waiters have to learn to keep good balance when serving food. Many people leave their coach seats to go to the dining car. A dining car is like a traveling restaurant. Here, while they eat their meals, the passengers can enjoy the moving landscape. For passengers who don't want a big meal, this train has a lunch car. Bob has ordered a sandwich for lunch and a glass of milk. Sandwich, the train is approaching a station. It's just a small one, but it's important for the train crew because here, the engineer and his helper are leaving the train and a new crew takes over. This way, the train has a rested engineer every few hours. here. This is Clyde. Bob has company. Now the boys can watch the landscape together. And they can talk about the things they've seen on the trip so far. Bob tells Clyde about the ranch he's going to visit. After a while, they decide to go to the observation car where they can play checkers. In good company, the afternoon passes quick. The boys don't even notice that the sun is gradually setting. Already the evening meals are being served. While the train speeds into the dusk, the porter prepares beds for his passengers. The shadows grow longer, and the countryside darkens. Guided by signposts and signals which tell the engineer the safe speed at which he may travel, the train speeds toward the sunset. One by one, the lights go out, and the passengers go to sleep. Now it's morning again. Uncle Ray's ranch is just across the mountain range, but the train won't have to climb over it. The tracks are cut into the sides of the mountain. And sometimes the train goes through the mountain itself, through a tunnel. Ready, asked the Pullman conductor. Bob will get off at a small station where the train stops only for a moment, but he's all packed and ready. carries a step for passengers so that they can get off the high cars easily. Uncle Ray's Jeep is waiting. The train starts off again, and off goes Bob to the ranch, to new adventures with cowboys and horses. But the train goes on, on across more mountains, more valleys, across desert country until it reaches its destination, California.